بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله الذي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله بيهف توفيق to have our majlis tonight and inshallah we want to talk about the helpers of Imam Hussein عليه السلام there is something very special about the companions of Imam Hussein alayhi salam although still their number was not that much but the quality was exceptional and it seems that none of the Imams and maybe even none of the prophets and messengers before uh, the Imams had such quality companions even in this number so maybe one two three four five yes but to have tens of such uh, devoted companions very loyal very understanding very faithful is exceptional and this by itself of course it's a sad reality that why around such great personalities uh, in the course of history we don't have you know thousands of people like this and it's just a matter of few in any case what I would like to share with you is a little bit about uh, we talk about the situation of Amir al Imam Hassan Imam Sadiq and then we focus on Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Imam Amir al-Mu'minin alayhi salam uh, in Nahj al balagha in Sermon 26 he says فَنَذَرْتُ فَإِذَا لَيْسَ لِي مُعِينٌ إِلَّا أَهْلُ بَيْتِ After the demise of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Imam said I looked carefully around and I saw I don't have any helper except my own family people outside the family were very few less than you know maybe 10 people in some hadiths you know mentions you know very low numbers maybe three some say you know a little bit more people who were really committed so Imam says فَإِذَا لَيْسَ لِي مُعِينٌ إِلَّا أَهْلُ بَيْتِ فَظَنَنْتُ بِهِمْ عَنِ الْمَوْتِ So I felt that I should not you know let them die I should feel uh, you know miserly about losing them to death I should not let death capture them and then Imam explains that how he suffered and remained still, you know, patient. And he says, you know, there was, as we have in also khutbah Sheikh Shaqiyya, that he says, you know, there was like a bone in my throat, and still I had to wait. Later, when the third Khalifa was very publicly and heavily criticized and people were uh, tired of his way of governing and then he finally was killed lots of pressure was put on Amir al-Mu'minin alayhi salam and he said لَوْلَا حُضُورُ الْحَابِرُ وَقِيَامُ الْحُجَّةِ بِوَجُودِ النَّاصِرِ 
وما أخذ الله على العلماء ألا يقاروا على كبرة ظالم ولا سغب مظلوم لألقيت حبلها على غاربها ولسقيت آخرها بكأس أولها ولألفيتم دنياكم هذه أزهد عندي من عفتة عن زين Had it not been that these people are here, there's such a great crowd, and Hujja is now complete on me, Bevujud and Nasser. So now I have helpers. So it means that he didn't have helpers before. Now he has helpers. And Allah also has a covenant with ulama that they should not be indifferent when the oppressors have eaten too much, they are dying out of eating too much, and the oppressed people have nothing to eat. Had it not been for these three things, حضور الحاضر وقيام الحجة بوجود الناصر وما أخذ الله على العلماء The presence of this audience and completion of حجة because I have helpers and the responsibility of ulama towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I would uh, lift this camel of khilafa I would have distanced myself from this as I did it in the past so in the period after the demise of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he didn't have helpers at that time he had helpers and up to end of his life he had some helpers some of them very good some of them not that good this is why Amir al muminin suffered a lot from even people inside his camp and sometimes he complains about them and mentions this to them and some of the things he ma didn't manage to change for example about you know salat tarawih that when imam ali salam asked imam hasan to sell people not to say salat tarawih you know in jama'a uh, we don't have any mustahab salat in jama'a then they started uh, protesting and mentioning wa sunnata mentioning the name of you know one of the caliphs in any case imam had to suffer but uh, still he had some very good uh, people as we mentioned about shortatul khamis ashabu sir he had imam hassan alayhi salam maybe had the most difficult situation not that many helpers and on the other hand someone like Muawiyah that with his satanic uh, plans and policies and also with having no sense of haya he was happy to manipulate everything we didn't have such thing before so Imam Hassan alayhi salam was really alone I would like to share with you uh, what Allama Majlisi in Biharul Anwar, pa uh, volume 44, page 147, quotes from Al Ihtijaj. A person says, Ataytu al Hassan ibn Ali alayhim as salam, faqultu yabn Rasulullah. Adlalta Rekabana. This is after the peace treaty. He says to Imam Hassan alayhi salam, You humiliated us. Vajaltana ma'ashara shi'a abidan ma baqiya rajulun or ma baqiya ma'aka rajulun. There are two versions. You made us shi'a servants and slaves you gave control to Umayyads and you humiliated us it seems that this person was a Shia was someone a follower of Imam Hassan but still he talks like this to Imam alayhi salam 
فقال و مم ذاك امام از from what you are saying this what is the basis of this why you are saying this قلت بتسليمك الامر لهذا الطاقيه he said by you submitting this <coughs> affair this position of leadership political leadership to this taqiyah referring to muawiyah then imam hasan alayhi salam said wallahi ma sallamtu al amr ilayhi illa anni lam ajid ansaran by Allah I didn't submit this to him of course it was under a treaty there were lots of conditions but Imam somehow had to compromise he says Wallah I didn't do this except because I didn't find helpers لقاتلته ليلي ونهاري حتى يحكم الله بيني وبينه If I had helpers I would have fought against Muawiyah day and night till Allah decides either we would be winning or they would be winning you know we would be killed they would be killed what if I had helpers I had no hesitation to carry on so there is no change in policy if Amir al-Mu'mineen went to the battle of Safin Imam Hassan salam also was if he was in the same situation would have done the same and if Imam Ali was in the situation of Imam Hassan also he would have done the same so it's not that Na'uzubillah Imam Hassan was not brave and because of that uh, personal preference Na'uzubillah he compromised no when there is no helper what can you do then he said وَلَكِنِّي عَرَفْتُ أَحْلَ الْكُوفَةِ وَبَلَوْتُهُمْ I know the people of Kufa I have tested them as I said Amir al had already suffered from people of Kufa although there were many good people there but there were also many people who had superficial faith and commitment Imam Hassan says I t know them I have tested them وَلَا يَسْلَحُ لِي مِنْهُمْ مَا كَانَ فَاسِدًا what is corrupt from them would not suit me they are not people with whom I can do something إِنَّهُمْ لَا وَفَاءَ لَهُمْ وَلَا ذِمَّةِ فِي قَوْلٍ وَلَا فعل. they have no loyalty there is no commitment in their action and in their word إِنَّهُمْ لَمُخْتَلِفُونَ وَيَقُولُونَ لَنَا إِنَّ قُلُوبَهُمْ مَعَنَا وَإِنَّ سُيُوفَهُمْ لَمَشْهُورَةٌ عَلَيْنَا They are different. They say our hearts are with you but our swords are taken out against you. So this was known to Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam. And if Imam Hussein alayhi salam accepted the invitation of the people of Kufa, one reason was because there were many, many Shia among them who had invited Imam. And also Imam had no other option. It was not that, you know, he had uh, many options, you know, better options. And these people had, you know, uh, written letters and messages, representatives. And Imam had other options. Then he says, "Wahuwa yukallimuni." He says Imam Hassan was talking to me, and while he was talking to me, then Ida tanakha adam, then blood came out of his mouth, and I said, "Ma hada yabna Rasulullah." What is this son of the Prophet, son of the Messenger of Allah? May Allah 
would not bring any pain and illness to you. And then Imam said, this Taqiyah, Mu'awiyah, Dasa ilayya hadha Taqiyah man saqani samman faqad waqa ala kabidi. This Mu'awiyah has uh, commissioned someone to put poison to me and he says I told him afala tatadawa don't you treat yourself if you know that they, they have given you poison why you don't treat yourself and what is very sad that Imam says qad saqani marratain wa hadhihi thalitha la ajidu laha dawa he has given already twice before the poison and it's the third time and there is no treatment for it. So this is the loneliness of Imam Hassan salam, especially knowing that his own wife gave this poison to Imam salam. So some people betrayed him even if there were some people who were you know somehow brave like this man who is happy to fight for the cause of Islam against Muawiyah look at their understanding look at their followership he's questioning Imam says you have humiliated us these are the brave ones and you know some kind of the uh, people who are uh, more you know maybe kind of uh, outspoken um, in the time of Imam Sadiq alayhi salam we have something similar uh, from some aspect you know in the time of Imam Sadiq alayhi salam uh, Bani Umayyah went to decline which of course finally Bani Abbas took over it seems from some of the ahadith that we have that there was a hope in the Ahlul Bayt السلام, that if things go well and people listen to the wise leadership of Imams they could bring back to the right order but unfortunately some people rushed and people like you know Abu Muslim Khurasani and others they rushed they didn't wait for Imam alayhi salam they rushed they managed to get rid of Bani Umayyah but then they brought Abbasids and sometimes Abbasids were worse than Bani Umayyah they didn't listen to Imam alayhi salam so at that time that Bani Umayyah were in decline, some people were asking Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, you know, why you don't do something? Why you don't do something? You have lots of supporters, lots of helpers. So I would like to read for you two hadiths. One is in uh, Bihar al-Anwar volume 100 it says Imam Sadiq said Wallahi ya Sudair by Allah O Sudair law kan li shi'atun bi'adad hadhihi al-jida ma wasa'an al-uqud he pointed at some goats there were some goats. He said, if I had Shia equal to the number of these goats, it was not possible for me to sit. Means I should have uh, do qi done, done Qiyam. I should have risen. Uprising. But if I had helpers equal to the number of these goats. So, so there said, Nazalna wa sallayna falamma faragna min as salat ataftu ala al jida. He said, We came down, we said our salat. After we finished salat, I looked at those goats and counted them. Fa'adatuha. Fa'idahiya sabata ashar. 
They were only 17. Imam Sadiq says, if I had 17 Shia, I would have done something. In another hadith, Imam Sadiq said to Mufaddal ibn Qais, Kam shi'atuna bil kufa? How many Shia we have in Kufa? Qala qultu khamsuna alfan. He says, I said 50,000. Then Imam, after some time, said, Wallahi la badadtu an yakuna bil kufate khamsatun wa ishruna rajulan ya'arifuna amrana alladhi nahnu alayhi wa la yaquluna alayna illa al-haq. You said 15, sorry 50,000, khamsun, you said 50,000. Imam says, Wallahi by Allah I wish I had 25 people that know our affair and don't say anything about us except the truth and what is right, what should be said. لا يقولون علينا إلا الحق Not إلا الصدق because حق is more than صدق as we have explained in discussion about truthfulness and followership. Sometimes even something which is said may be true but not right to be said. So Imam says, I don't have even 25 people that I can trust them. This is again in Biharul Anwar Waliyam 100. Then there is a hadith that is in Manaqib ibn Shahra Ashub and it says that there is a person called Ma'moon al-Riqi. He says, Kuntu in the Sayyidi as-Sadiq alayhi salam. I was with my master Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. Is dakhala sahl ibn al-Hasan al-Khurasani. Sahl al-Khurasani from Khurasan. And Khurasan at that time you know, was big, you know, uh, uprising against oh my beat, Abu Muslim and other people. So he says, I was with Imam and Sahl Khurasani came, Sallama alayhi thumma jalasa. Then sat, sat with Imam. Faqala lahu yabna Rasulullah, lakumur ra'fatu wa rahmah. You are, you know, kind and loving person. Maybe this was a praise, maybe this was a criticism. You are a very soft person. أنتم أهل بيت الإمامة ما الذي يمنعك أن يكون لك حق تقعد عن What is stopping you that you have a حق and you sit you are not uprising وأنت تجد من شيعتك مئة ألف يضربون بين يديك بالسيف You have Hundred thousand Shia, just you know, we said in the previous hadith, just in the Kufa, you know, so there said there are 50,000 Shia. So, this person, Sahal Khurasan, says you have hundred thousand Shia, and maybe even more. This maybe was not, you know, like an exact number that Yadrabuna Baina Yadaike Besaif, they are happy to fight for you with their sword. Imam alayhi salam said, Ejlis ya khurasani, ra'adlahu haqqak. Sit. May Allah uh, take care of your rights. Then Imam said to someone to uh, ignite and put on fire in the oven. And it was then full of, you know, blazes of fire. So, Imam said, Ya Khurasani, Qum Fajlis Fittanur. 
Okay, you ask me to uprise, go and sit in the oven. He said, Ya Sayyidi, Ya Ibn Rasulullah, La Tu'adhib Li Bin Nar. He said, O oh, son of the Prophet, please don't punish me <laughs> with fire. He thought Imam has got angry with him and wants to punish him. Aqilni, aqalak Allah. Please forgive me, may Allah forgive you. Imam said, Qad aqaltuka. Okay. فَبَيْنَمَا نَحْنُ كَذَلِكَ إِذْ أَقْبَلَ هَارُونُ الْمَكِّي وَنَعْلُهُ فِي سَبَابَتِهِ سَبَابَتِهِ Harun al-Makki entered and he had in his uh, fingers, the, you know, carrying his shoes. Imam told him, after he said salam to Imam, and Imam replied, Imam said, أَلْقِ النَّعْلَ مِنْ يَدِكْ وَجْلَسْ فِي التَّنُورِ Just salam. After salam, Imam didn't explain anything. Just said, you know, drop your shoes and sit in the oven. قَالَ فَأَلْغَ النَّعْلَ مِنْ سَبَّابَتِي ثُمَّ جَلَسَ فِي التَّنُّورِ وَأَقْبَلَ الْإِمَامِ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ يُحَدِّثُ الْخُرَاسَانِ حَدِيثَ خُرَاسَانِ حَتَّى كَأَنَّهُ شَهَدُ Imam then started talking to this person about Khurasan as if Imam is, you know, uh, there, Imam is witnessing everything, kept talking about Khurasan. Then Imam said to him, this Khurasani, Van, Ya Khurasani, Vandur Mafet Tanur. Go and see what is in this oven. Mm. He says, I went there and saw Harun Maki is sitting comfortably in the fire. Fakharaja ilayna wa sallama alayna. Then he came out and said, Salam. Then Imam said, Kam tajidu bi Khurasan mislahada. How many people like him you have in Khurasan? He said, Wallahi wala wahidan. He used to say, We have 100,000 people who are happy to take their sword. Now he says, By Allah, we don't have even one person. Then Imam alayhi salam said that. We are in a time in anafi zaman or innafi zaman la najidu fihi khamsatan mu'adhideen lana. We don't have even five people who help us. Nahnu a'lamu bil waqt. We know better when is the right time. You see only the surface. You see people who are screaming and shouting. How many people are really 100% committed to speak when needed, to be silent when needed? There are people who are happy to speak always or to be silent always, to fight or to go for peace. Anything that is coming from leadership, they should be happy with it. So, Imam Sadiq is not even having few devoted helpers and this is unfortunately very sad of course Shia in the broader sense there are many thousands and when we say Imam Mahdi has 313 helpers we mean such people such quality people we shouldn't say, okay, Alhamdulillah, now there are millions of Shia. No, how many such people we have? Still, we don't have that 313. In some hadiths, any Imam who has 313, like the people of Badr, then he would make different decision. So, this is the situation of Imam Ali, Imam Hassan, Imam Hussein. But, Abu Abdullah alayhi salam was blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with having tens of devoted followers. Imam Ali didn't have, Imam Hassan didn't have, Imam Sadiq didn't have, other Imams didn't have. But Imam Hussein alayhi salam, despite all the problems that he faced, but he had such companions. 
you all have heard this famous saying of Imam Hussein alayhi salam that he said to his companions in the night of Ashura after praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said Allahumma inni ahmaduka ala an akramtana bin nabuwa O oh Allah, I praise you that you have honored us with Nabuwa, with prophethood. We are from the family of the Prophet, or we are blessed with this Prophet as Muslims also. Allah says in the Quran, Allah has given us eyes, ears, and hearts. Of course, Many people don't use it. Many pe for many people, these are closed, not working. But for us, it's working. It's open. وَعَلَّمْتَنَا Quran. You taught us the Quran. وَفَقَّحْتَنَا فِي الدِّينِ You gave us deep understanding of religion. فَجَعَلْنَا لَكَ مِنَ الشَّاكِرِينَ Please make us grateful for you. Include us among the people who are grateful for you. So even in the night of Ashura, he is praising Allah and thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he said, Amma ba'd fa'inni la a'lamu ashaban awfa wa la khayran min ashabi. I don't know. So Imam Hussain alayhi salam has lived with the Prophet. So he knows the companions of the Prophet. He knows the companions of Imam Ali. He knows the companions of Imam Hassan. And with his knowledge of Imam, he knows all the history. But uh, still he says, I don't know any companions awfa, more loyal, wala khayran, and better than my companions. People that put together loyalty and piety some people are loyal even to bad leaders sometimes maybe Muawiyah also had you know one two loyal people although maybe they were mostly for dunya because of dunya for him but you can find people who have loyal followers Saddam Hussein still may have you know some loyal people but to be at the peak of loyalty and at the peak of taqwa together. No one was at that peak of loyalty and along with taqwa, like companions of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. وَلَا أَحْلَ بَيْتٍ أَبَرَّ وَلَا أَوْصَلَ مِنْ أَحْلَ بَيْتٍ And I don't know any household, any family, who are Abar. Isa alayhi salam said, Awsani bi salati wa zakat ma dumtu ayya wa birran bi walidi. To be kind with my mother. Abar means to be so kind. Wala awsal to do sali rahim more than my family. Who consider the kinship. Sali rahim is not just, you know, to visit. Sali rahim is not to leave someone without help when difficulties come. فَجَزَاكُمُ اللَّهُ جَمِيعًا عَنِّي خَيْرًا May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward all of you on my behalf. I cannot reward you. May Allah reward you on my behalf. So this is a certificate that Imam Hussein gave to his companions and Ahlu Bayt who both are helpers of Hussein. When we say Ashab, normally we don't use Ashab for Ahl Bayt. We say Ashab and Ahl Bayt. But when we say Ansar, it includes both. In Ziyarat Nahiyya Muqaddasa, it says, Assalamu Alaikum Ya Khayra Ansar Allah. The best of the helpers of Allah. We talked about Kunu Ansar Allah. When Allah says, Be Ansarullah, like 
ایسا حسد تو حواریون از قال ایسا ابن مریم للحواریین من انصاری لله قال الحواریون نحن انصار الله We should also be helpers of Allah These people were the best helpers of Allah Now let's try to analyze a little bit what made them that much special what qualities they had and what historical moment they happen to be because that is also very important sometimes there are times that are very crucial very special that if in that moment you make right decision you can rise a lot and if you fail to make right decision you can drop a lot there are some critical times in like for example in business sometimes business is going normal but then market may be changing or you need to make a decision to change your I don't know product line or you know bring some changes or make some investment you know open a new branch I don't know you have some time to make a decision if you make a right decision it will boom it will rise if you make bad decision or don't make any decision you may forever uh, suffer life is also like this that no matter how good you are there are moments that your action your stance your position make a big difference this is why in the discussion about akhlaq that we had in the house in the first year we said normally qualities are very important not compared to actions but there are moments that actions become exceptionally important like zarbatu aliyan yawm al khandaq afdal min ibadat al thaqli that bravery that amir al munin had that iman that he had loyalty that he had didn't change didn't increase before khandaq after khandaq was the same but that was a moment that if Imam Ali in that moment had not taken right decision could have very negative consequences for Islam and therefore making right decision make that action better than Ibadat al or like for example after the demise of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam people who were very moment good companions of the Prophet but did they give good response maybe it was one action but if they didn't give good response forever they could suffer from that mistake and also Ummah can suffer in any case the companions of Imam Hussein Alaihi Salaam they had some good qualities in themselves some righteous deeds but also they made in the crucial time right decision and that exalted them forever and Allah is so grateful and awliyaullah like Imam Hussein are so grateful that till end of this world and even in heaven and in the minds and memories of people these people will be next to Imam Hussein it's very hard to find any mention of Imam Hussein without mention of his ashab if we do ziyara, if we send salam, if we cry, if we ask for, I don't know, a place in heaven, if we ask for shifa, always we are mindful of this ashab. So they are so close to Imam that they are like radiations of the son of Imam. And it's very hard to find such closeness between any Imam and his helpers
There is a hadith that Imam Baqir alayhi salam says Kharaja Aliyun Yasiru bin Nas. Amir al Mumin alayhi salam was moving with some people and they reached Karbala, very close to Karbala. Hatta Ida Kana bi Karbala, Allah, Mailain, O Mailan, about, you know, maybe you know few kilometers to Karbala and he said that this is the place that uh, some prophets were killed etc then he says that here is Munakh Rekabin here is the place that some lovers of Allah will be stationed and then will be killed they are martyrs that no one from before, from past, or from future would precede them. So they are, as a group, the best martyrs, as a group. Maybe exceptionally, yes, of course, but as a group, they are the best. Some people have said this with a little change. For example, they said that Amir al Mu'minin said, for example, Tabarani says, Yuqtalu fi hadha al mawdi shuhada laytha mithlahum shuhada illa shuhada u badr. People who will be killed here would be martyrs, that no martyrs would resemble them except shuhada u badr means shuhada of badr are also that close because you know shuhada of badr have very special you know they are sabiqun you know and they were very very loyal but there is a doubt about this version and when we read some text we don't find this addition shuhada of badr for example in musir al ahzan says يُقْتَلُ فِي هَذَا الْمَوْضِ شُحَدَاءُ الْأَشْهِدَاءُ أَشْهِدَاءُ like Anbiya so maybe there was a mistake you know because it said شُحَدَاء إِلَّا شُحَدَاء بَعْد maybe you know they read شحداء الأشهداء they read إلا شحداء then they maybe thought something is missing they put bad anyway it seems that According to what Imam Hussein himself has said, this shuhada must be the best shuhada, even compared to shuhada of Badr. There is also something very special about these people that you find in some uh, books. Shaykh Tusi Rahmatullah Alay quotes from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam that one day Lady Umm Salama cried Asbahat Yawman Umm Salama Tabki so it was told to her why Mimma Buka okay why do you Buka okay why do you cry she said Laqad Qutila Ibn Yal Hussain Al Layla she was in Medina but she said, this night my son Hussein was killed. وَذَلِكَ إِنَّنِي مَا رَأَيْتُ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ مُنْذُ مَذَا إِلَّا اللَّيْلَ I had not had a dream of Rasulullah since he passed away. Tens of years. Except last night. All these years she didn't have a dream of Rasulullah except last night. And he says, فَرَأَيْتُهُ شَاحِبًا كَئِيبًا I saw Rasulullah very sad and said, مَا لِي أَرَاكَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ شَاحِبًا كَئِيبًا 
قالت ما زلت اللیلة احفر القبور للحسین و اصحابه in her dream in the symbolic, symbolic language of the dream Rasulullah told her that tonight I was digging the grave of Hussein and his companions and to have Rasulullah digging the graves of the companions of Imam Hussein not only Imam Hussein himself it's very special it shows that how much uh, closeness they have to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and how much Rasulullah feels somehow uh, in debt to them and appreciative to them another thing that it is interesting about these ashab is that according to some hadith and some historical reports their names were registered from before of course without taking away freedom there is free will but it was known who would freely get tawfiq and free will together to be among them for example some people used to criticize ibn abbas why you didn't join hussein ibn ali and ibn abbas used to say إن أصحاب الحسين لم ينقصوا رجلا ولم يزيدوا رجلا. He said companions of Hussein did not increase or decrease even one person. نعرفهم بأسماءهم من قبل شهودهم. Before they became martyrs, we knew them. So someone who was very close knew these people. Muhammad ibn Hanafiya also says. إن أصحاب هو عندنا لم مكتوبون بأسماءهم وأسماء آبائهم. He says companions of Imam Hussein are registered and we know the records of them and the name of their fathers. So their name and the name of their fathers. So it's not even, for example, just one person name that may be common between two three people because with the name of their father then they were uh, easily identified. Now, there are some good qualities in them in addition to these merits that inshallah we can talk about them tomorrow. Tonight is the night that we remember the companions of Imam Hussein. Alhamdulillah, our discussion naturally reached this point. One of the great companions of the Prophet, who is also a companion of Rasulullah and Amir al Mu'mineen is Habib ibn Madahir, a very, very dedicated and pious person, one of the, as we said, Ashabu Sir of Amir al Mu'mineen, who had knowledge of uh, some of the uh, hidden things, a person that it is said that every night was reciting Quran from the beginning to the end there is hadith لله دارك يا حبيب لقد كنت فاضلا تختم القرآن في ليلة so he must perhaps be also hafiz of Quran and reading from heart perhaps I, I am not sure but I think maybe because if you know for many years you read the quran so much so you can be hafiz and you know reading quickly but such dedication such familiarity with the quran he had in the night of i mentioned just two three uh, stories about habib and inshallah we benefit from um masaib inshallah in the night of Ashura, Habib noticed that ladies might be worried. And I think they heard also conversation between Lady Zainab and Imam Hussein alayhi salam. And Lady is worried that maybe these companions are going, some of them, to leave Imam Hussein alone. So, 
you know, Imam Hussein, of course, re reassured Lady Zainab and said, I have tested them, inshallah. I will talk to about this uh, in my discussion for next day, inshallah. But I want to mention just what Habib and some people did. So Habib, with some of his friends, they went to close to the tents of the ladies and said, Assalamu alaikum ya ma'ashara haram rasulullah. May peace be upon you, O family of the Prophet, O ladies who are haram of Rasulullah. Hadhi savar mufetyanakum. Alaw Allah yagmuduha illa fi riqab man yaptag su afikum. These are the swords of your men that they have made qasam, they have you know, committed themselves that they would not let any person who wishes to do bad thing to do to remain alive. They are going to use this sword and to put in the neck of any person who wants to do bad to you, has a bad intention about you. These are the spears of your men. Whoever wants to scatter you, they are going to attack them. So in this way, they uh, once again showed their commitment to uh, reassure Lady Zainab and other ladies that they are not going to leave Imam Hussein alone. And Imam Hussein alayhi salam said, Ashabi jazakumullahu an ahl bayt nabiyyakum khayra. May Allah reward you on behalf of the family of the Prophet. On the day of Ashura, he has many instances. He was one of the main commanders and you know Imam Hussein alayhi salam was very organized uh, you know although uh, there was no way to you know fight you know such massive army but uh, still Imam Hussein alayhi salam did everything as good as he could organizing preparing thinking about everything as a great commander so one of the things that was uh, conventional was to divide the army into different parts. As I said, you know, normally they used to have five parts. And Habib was responsible for Maysara, for the left. And Zuhair ibn al Qain was responsible for the right side. So he was a major commander. He was making jokes on the day of Ashura. Yazid ibn Khudayr al-Hamdani says, Ya akhi, laysa hadhi bi sa'at al My brother, this is not the time of, you know, making joke or being humorous. So many enemies, so many problems, so many difficulties. And then Habib said, Fa'ayyu mawdhi'in ahakku min hadha bi surur if today I am not going to be happy, which time and which place I can be happier? So he sees this, you know, similar to the vision of Lady Zainab, Ma Ra'aytu Illa Jamila. Habib is seeing this as a, you know, kind of entry to heaven. And he's happy. Otherwise, he was not a person who was, you know, uh, making jokes too much, you know. But this day he was exceptionally happy. When Shemr ibn Zawshan responded very disrespectfully to one of the uh, sayings of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, and he said that Imam Hussein alayhi salam, Ya'budullah ala harf, and doesn't know, a'uzu billah, what he says, Habib defended Imam Hussein alayhi salam. 
and said to Imam Hussein alayhi salam that I bear witness that you are truthful. The last moment of the life of Habib uh, was a little bit after Muslim Ibn Ausajah. So he witnessed martyrdom of Muslim Ibn Ausajah and they were very good friends. So when Muslim Ibn Ausajah uh, fell down, Imam Hussein and Habib together went towards him. So Imam Hussein is there, Habib is also there. Fadana minhu Habib. So Habib said to Muslim Ibn Usajah, Azza alayya masra'uk, ya Muslim. It's very difficult for me to see you on the ground, O Muslim. Abshir bil jannah, but have the bishara of heaven. Faqala lahu Muslim qawlan da'ifan. Then Muslim with a very weak voice, he is injured, he's going to die, he's very weak. But he said, Basharakallahu bi khair. May Allah give you bashara of good. Then Habib said, Lawla inni a'lamu anni fi ithrik lahiqun bika min sa'ati hadhihi. لَأَحْبَبْتُ أَنْ تُوْسِيَنِي بِكُلَّ هَمِّكَ حَتَّى أَحْفَظَكَ فِي كُلِّ ذَلِكَ Had it not been that I know that soon I am going to join you, I would have asked you to give me your wasiya and I would make sure that everything I do as you say. بِمَا أَنْتَ أَحْلٌ لَهُ فِي الْقِرَابَةِ وَالدِّينِ Because you deserve that. Because you are mu'min in religion you have right over me and also in qirama you are you know my relative you are kin to me close to me so you have all the rights over me then muslim ibn awsajah said bal ana usika bihada i have no advice except one he pointed at imam hussein and said my advice is to be with hussein رحمك الله أن تموت دونه to die with him and before him and Habib said أفعل ورب الكعبة by the Lord of Kaaba I would certainly do that inshallah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him this tawfiq to be killed before Imam Hussein alayhi salam and remain forever a star next to the son of Hussein. Allah la'natullah ala al-qawm al-zalimin wa sayya'lamu al-ladheena zalamu ayya munqalabin yanqalabun.